Welcome to another episode of New to Me. I'm Stephen Michael Zach, and today we'll be looking at the Sekonica X60, and I really don't understand why this is getting great reviews. Um, and we will get into that, but let's have an overview first, and then let's jump over to the workbench and check it out. are with the sitting down with the Sekonica. This is the X60. And the first thing I did get is I did get this little pouch here. Let me see if I could open this without tearing it. I did get this little pouch here of interesting gels. Uh, it's like little shower curtain gels that go around the beauty dish. You get red, you get yellow, green, blue. Uh, and you get like a diffusion one, which is very interesting. I'm not going to take them all out. I just have a feeling they'll be very hard to get back in this bag. Um, but that is very interesting. Um, and that's kind of your colored gels. Now, moving over to the light itself. Um, very, very cool. This is a fantastic, fantastic case. It's got a great handle. It's got feet on the bottom, which is very cool. It is very padded. You also have this kind of loop up top here for, I guess, a tripod or, I guess, a, a, a travel stand. And it's Velcro, so you can adjust it. It does have straps for a shoulder strap, which is very nice. It just feels good and solid all the way around. Great zippers. When you open it up, you're going to have a top pouch and you're going to have uh, this stuff. But one thing I do want to show you is it does have these little uh, things here. It has straps at the bottom. It has these little clips here. So you can kind of clip it so that it doesn't fall completely open, which is very, very cool. Uh, really nice, a nice touch. Uh, let me just show you this. So there you go. It's not going to fall back. And if this is unzipped, all your stuff is not going to fall out. So inside, we get our instructions. We get our shoulder strap. Up top here, we do get a power brick and the cord, which is, a, which is very nice. Again, no ballast. And again, this isn't as long as the GVM. So you're going to get that. And also, once you unwind this cord, it's very tight up here. Uh, and then you've got to get this remote control. It is cheap. It is plastic. It is chintzy. I probably won't even show you this turned on um, because it's just not really worth talking about. Now, up top, you're going to get this padding here. And you're also, when you open this up, you're going to get this little, like, wrist strap. I guess you can attach it to the back. So if you want to be holding this and walking with it, although there's no battery, so I don't understand why you would be. Uh, I have no idea why they included this. Now, let's open and talk about the dish because I see this in every single review. In every single review, the dish arrives bent. Uh, it is just the way they're packing it is just not safe. Uh, every reviewer has talked about this, every review has come in and said that this always arrives bent. Uh, and I am no exception. So if you are lucky enough to get one that isn't bent, uh, congratulations. You'll probably be one of the only ones. Uh, it's just the way they pack it. They put it in the case and they throw it in a box and they throw it in another box. But putting a little piece of cardboard in it, not going to save it from getting bent. You need to pack this in foam, very much like GVM is. Uh, so that is a huge downside. So you will, that will need to be replaced. Uh, inside the case is very well padded, very nice. Let's take a look at the unit itself. And when we pull this out, this thing is looks on the outside to be very beautiful. It is palm size. It is made of all metal. It is rugged and heavy. It feels really solid. It's got a fantastic yoke. I mean, this is all metal. It's got a little screw here. I don't know what that's for. It does have an umbrella uh, holder here, uh, although this seems to be a little off kilter. And I'm wondering if that's something I can adjust. 
but it does seem to be a little off kilter. Uh, but it does have the umbrella thing. It has these plastic knobs, which are just fine. Uh, the yoke is very good. You just, the yoke is very, um, very responsive. You can just tilt it and it stays and then you tighten it. Now, one thing I will say is I wish this were 360 because uh, it doesn't point down very well. Uh, now you can go up, but as you could hear, there's that scraping noise. The edge actually scrapes against the yoke, which is not good. You're gonna end up scuffing the metal, uh, but you can get it to go to, to lie flat like that, but not without some scuffing. Uh, but all in all, it is a good yoke. And I'll tell you, most of the yokes I've ever seen that are single yokes uh, usually fall forward. This locks really well. Um, this is very, very solid. Uh, got a nice solid metal handle. Now let's talk about the back. The back is pretty good. Uh, you get an LCD screen now. It's a terrible LCD screen, but at least you get one. Uh, the viewing angles are extremely poor unless you're looking straight on. Um, it does have a nice button here. The DC jack, let me show you this. The DC jack is very strange um, because when you plug this in, it does not kind of go in all the way. There's like some exposed metal. So I'm never sure whether this is making contact or not. Um, and that is very, very weird. And I will hold this up so you can kind of see it. It kind of, there's some exposed metal. It never feels like it's quite in and it's frankly a little bit rickety. So that is very questionable. The other thing that's questionable is this dial. It is very, very cheap, very cranky. It's got the little button you press in in the center. And then you got these cheap clicky buttons. So you can definitely tell this is where they skimped out on the price to make this an under $200 light. And now up front, we have this locking mechanism for the Bowens mount. And let me just show you this. Let me just uh, pop this on here. And again, it's very, very loose, but here's the problem. The lock does absolutely nothing. Uh, say you had a big uh, softbox or modifier on here and you tap and you not bump into it and it spins around and it falls off and it knocks your light right onto your talent. That's going to be very problematic where it knocks the light over and breaks it. Uh, although this thing's built like a, like a tank, so I don't see it breaking. Um, but that is terrible that the Bowens mount lock does not work. Uh, even on the GVM, which is a much cheaper light and a much cheaper mechanism, well, not much cheaper, um, that's bad. So bad knob, bad locking mechanism, bad DC jack. At least it has an LCD screen. It's not great. Okay, so here we are, and we are at 1%. Now, the first thing I notice is there is a very noticeable hot spot. And I think the reason you're getting that center hot spot is because this dish uh, is a lot longer than the GVM dish, which we will try. Um, so you are going to get a big hot spot in the center, which kind of bothers me. The other thing that's bothering me is take a listen to the fan. And now listen up close. So as you can hear, this fan is actually much louder than the GVM. Um, it just is so noticeable and so crazy noticeable um, that I think I owe GVM an apology. Um, so super loud fan. It's got a hot spot in, in the center. Now the fall off is very nice, uh, very much like the GVM. Now you will notice again, it is a tighter beam and that's because this is a longer dish. But let's go ahead now and let's go ahead and switch dishes. And now the mount seems to be working. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And here's the difference between the two dishes. This is the GVM. This is the one that goes to the Sakonica. Let's go ahead and slap on the GVM dish. And right away, you're gonna get a much wider beam. There's no hot spot in the center. Uh, and I just think this dish looks so much better, uh, especially if you're trying to do like anything with like beauty or you're trying to light a product, you don't want that hot spot in the center. So that's looking real good right there. Let's go ahead and pull that off without even unlatching it. And let's go back to the dish that actually came with it. And there we go. Now. 
another thing is the viewing screen. The angles are terrible unless you're looking straight on. It is cheap. It is hard to see. I don't know if you could see it from there. I uh, will zoom in here so you can kind of see it. But the viewing angles are pretty bad. Um, so let's move on to, let's go ahead and start going up in brightness. And the first thing I notice is this is not stepless. This jitters up. This pops up each level, um, which is terrible. Um, it, very, it just shows me that this is a very cheap, cheap, cheap LED. And let's go up to 100. And there we are at 100%. And there is a definitely noticeable hot spot in the center. Um, still looks good, still a tight beam, but uh, just when you start to turn this down, first off, when you turn this down, it doesn't, until you hit 80, it doesn't really start to do anything. This is about 75% here. And if you notice now it's just flickering a little bit, flickering a little bit, and now it starts to kind of sort of go down. So pretty bad, uh, pretty cheap, pretty bad. I am not thrilled with how flickery this is. That is not the sign of a quality light. The GVM is smooth and has absolutely no flicker. Uh, does and, and is definitely stepless. So let's take a look at the effects here. You're going to hit the effects button. And of course, you're going to get your lightning effect. Now, one thing I will suggest is you have to have, you press the set button in the center of the dial here, and you really do have to set this to 10 in order to get the effects to repeat themselves. If you, if it's set to six or below, uh, it's going to be very slow. Nothing is really going to happen. Of course, you get your flash bulb effect. You get your dead bulb effect here. Of course, you have your TV effect. And then you get this kind of like fire effect. Now for fire, you will need to add that orange like shower cap gel. Um, and again, I don't know how well that's going to work. I don't even want to take those out of the bag um, because I don't think they're particularly too great. So that's it. That is the Sakani. X60. Again, you've got the power brick with no ballast, uh, short cord, and uh, that's it. Um, all in all, this is a very interesting light, and let's go back to the main table for my final thoughts. Okay, so where do I stand on the Sakonica X60? I do not understand why every YouTuber is giving this a thumbs up. This is not a very good light. Yes, the build quality is fantastic. It is aluminum. It's got a great yoke. It's got a great case. It comes with all the bells and whistles, but the remote control is cheap and chintzy. You get those kind of like shower cappy, like plasticky gels. Okay, that's fine. But, and, and you do get a fantastic case. Uh, the case is really well thought out, uh, but, case is not the most important thing here. Um, the light is light is good build quality pretty much all around. You are going to get a bent dish. Every review I've seen, the dish has been bent. It's just the way they're packaging them. So Sokonica has to figure out how to package these better. And the GVM, everything comes encased in foam. And that's probably what they have to do. Uh, but your dish will be bent. Now, talking about the dish and the Bowens mount, which is a huge disappointment because I don't even need to disengage the lock. The lock does absolutely nothing on this thing. And say you have a big modifier on here and that modifier falls off and then hits your light and then it falls on your talent, you're going to be in trouble. So the Bowens mount, the lock here is a huge cheap disappointment. Uh, swing around to the back, you do have an LCD screen. It is a te terrible from every viewing angle except straight on. Uh, but at least it has one. Uh, you do have these very clicky, cheap buttons here. The DC jack, as I showed you before, it does not, uh, the, the, it doesn't go all the way in. There's like a little ring of, of exposed metal, so it doesn't feel like it's, it's connecting properly. Uh, you do get a nice button on the back here, and then you get this very cheap plasticky, it feels like I can tear it off a button. And again, the light, it is jittery. It is not stepless. It, just really badly jitters down. And when you look at the quality of the light, 
um, in the center is a big hot spot. So this definitely proves that this cob is not great. When you look at the GVM, it's it may not be as bright and it may be a little bit wider, but it it is smooth from it is pretty solid and, and uniform from the center to the edges. It has a nice fall off. This has a giant hot spot in the center of it, and that is not very good. Um, it just it just not a very not a very good LED on here. Um, so my final thoughts is the Sekonica, very well thought out, uh, body very well designed, fantastic case, but at the end of the day, between the fan and the, the jittery cob and the hot spot, uh, I can't recommend this. I don't understand why people are giving this the thumbs up. Uh, this really has problems. And um, yeah, I mean, Close again, so close, but not quite there. Uh, I do have to apologize to GVM about going off on them on the fan uh, because after hearing this, the GVM fan is actually much nicer than this one. Or, or uh, and so I do have to kind of apologize to them. Uh, they still can use a lot of. Um, I mean, if they if GVM built something with this body, like made of aluminum, this size could get a quieter fan in there, and. Um, and keep what and give us a better mount and and give us an LCD screen and then give us that same quality light. I would pay 170 for that light over this one. The GVM is 120. This comes in at 170. And my honest opinion is go for the GVM if you are looking for a cheap budget-friendly light. Uh, this is not it. There's just too much technically wrong between the fan and the light and the hot spot and the fact that the visual, the visual effects, when you turn them on, you then have to hit the set button, you have to go all the way up to 10 to get them to actually do anything. Um, and then you need to put on the shower curtain gels in order to, you know, again, it's only a, it's only a, a, a daylight colored light. So at the end, if you want something that does effects, get an Aperture MC, they're much cheaper. Um, and if you want a small light like this, look at the NAN light. Uh, the Forenza, I think it's the Forenza 50 or 60. I think it's the Forenza 60. Uh, that is going to be much better than this thing. Or if you're looking for a budget option, I can absolutely recommend the GVM, uh, which will give you a much nicer light. This, I just don't understand why people are going crazy about this so much. So that's it. If you have any questions or comments, you can drop them in the notes below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to mash the bell button to be notified when we drop a brand new video. I'm Stephen Michael Zach. And this is new to me.